Clear. Although you have already received one counting a six week workout, this program and this video will detail the entire summer conditioning program, the exercise that we use, the technical application. The description of each exercise is found in your conditioning book. We also ask and advise that you watch the video. It is one thing to read, it is another thing to actually view. The first exercise we're going to talk about is everybody's favorite, the bench press. As on the other video, we'll demonstrate the bench press and how to perform it properly here at the University of Pittsburgh. First thing you need to understand is when you lay down on your bench, your shoulder blades should be in a tucked position, tucked together and driven into the bench. We do not take a wide grip bench here. We use a relatively close grip, more effectively isolates the pectorials, the shoulders and the triceps. Most importantly, this is where you play football at. He who gets his hands inside wins. Also, if you know anything about the martial arts, the further your hands get away from your body, the more likely you are to be collapsed. They are collapsible angles when the hands are spaced wide apart. When the hands are in tight, it is a non-collapsible angle. It is our idea that we try to train our athletes so they can use the movements in the weight room on the field and one of the ways we accomplish that is in all pressing movements you will use a relatively close grip. The bench press as the athlete positions himself on the bench, tucks the shoulder blades together, drives them into the bench. His grip will be no wider than one thumb from where smooth meets thorough on the bar or no wider than shoulder width. Extend the arms up, the bar is locked out overhead. Inhale, get a big gulp of air and hold your breath. Lower the bar to the lower part of the chest, which is the highest part of the chest, and drive straight up. Push the bar straight off the chest. Do not push the bar back over the face. The, the shortest distance between two points has always been and always will be a straight line. We do not advise our athletes to push the bar back over the face. As far as the arch in the lower back, you have to remember, the weight when it is lowered in the bench press is lowered with the upper back, the shoulders, and the tricep. It has nothing to do with the lower back. All this nonsense about a big arch in the lower back will help you bench press is a bunch of crap. The bar gets lowered onto the upper back and chest. Your feet should be slightly in front of you. Squeeze your thighs against the bench. Push your feet into the floor to create reaction or energy from the floor up through the kinetic chain to help accelerate the bar off the chest. This is the bench press. Okay, Chad. It is important for you to athletes to understand the importance of bar speed. You virtually have two different days within a week on a four-day split routine. You will have two days which are just concerned with max effort days, which the important aspect here is to strain your body. The second are dynamic days, or speed of movement. If your bench press is 300 and you're only using 60% of 300, which is roughly 180 pounds, we expect 300 pounds of force to be exerted into 180 pounds. We are looking to develop bar speed, great starting and accelerating strength, great reversal or reactive strength. Please pay particular attention to all dynamic days and speed of movement. The next exercise is the dumbbell bench. Once again, you'll squeeze your shoulder blades together and drive them into the bench. The dumbbells, one dumbbell in each hand, lay back onto the bench. Keep your elbows tucked in and punch away from the dumbbell. Do not press up, but punch away. Notice my palms are facing inward. This is semi supinated or neutral grip. Lower the bar. Notice position of the elbows with the dumbbells and punch away. Elbows should be at a 45 degree angle as you punch away. This is a dumbbell bench press. Okay. As you just noticed, the dumbbell bench press, we will occasionally also perform the dumbbell bench press while lying on the floor, just like the barbell floor press, which we'll demonstrate here in a minute. It breaks the eccentric concentric chain, eliminates the plyometric effect of the myotatic stretch reflex of the muscle, increasing great starting and accelerating the strength and increasing the intensity of the contraction. Okay. The next movement is a barbell incline. As the bench press, your shoulder blades are tucked together and driven into the bench. The bench is on a 45 degree angle. Once again, we'll use a close grip. Elbows will stay in a tucked position. Remember, we are not bodybuilding. Our elbows do not get away from our body. They stay at a 45 degree angle tucked position. Once again, using a close grip, lift the bar up directly over the chest. Inhale, get a big gulp of air, hold your breath. Descend slowly with the bar, elbows in a tucked position. Push away from the bar, push it straight off of the chest. Do not push back over your eyes. Push the bar straight up, 
up with the chest. Once again, driving your feet into the floor to create force from the floor up through the tire kinetic chain to help accelerate the bar. This is the barbell incline. Next exercise is a dumbbell incline, just like the dumbbell bench will be performed on an incline bench, roughly 45 degree angle. Once again, dumbbell in each hand, palms will face each other for a neutral or semi-supinated grip. Elbows will stay tucked. You will push away from the dumbbell in a punching action. Punch away. Always trying to push as fast and explosively as possible. This is a dumbbell incline. One of our favorite max effort exercises is the barbell floor press. The great thing about benching off the floor, whether it be with a barbell or a dumbbell, your legs are straight out in front of you, so it virtually eliminates your legs and lower back from the movement. Total isolation on the chest, the pectorals, and the triceps. Once again, you have to stop the descent of the bar on the floor, which teaches you to push your back into the floor and push away from the bar, again, simulating that punching movement. This will develop great starting and accelerating strength, it eliminates the plyometric effect and a myotetic stretch reflex or breaks the eccentric concentric chain of the exercise. This is a barbell floor press. Once again, same close grip on the bench. Inhale, hold your breath. Lower the bar, stop the descent of the bar, push away and push straight up. Inhale, lower the bar, push away. This is one of our max effort exercises. This is a barbell floor press. Our next max effort exercise are rack lockouts in a power rack. You notice on our power racks, the holes are only one inch apart, allows us to overload any specific joint angle which is in the range of motion. We adjust for either four, six, eight, 10, or 12 inches off the chest to lock out. We place the pin in the rack, depending on where our lockout's gonna be. With the pin in the rack, it becomes very difficult and very hard on the elbows. I'll demonstrate a rack lockout, and then I'll show you how we have made adjustments for rack lockouts, which has made it a lot easier for our athletes. This is a rack lockout. This is a static overcome by dynamic movement. Notice the bars in a stationary position. Make sure you position yourself properly on the bench. Tuck shoulder blades together, chest up. Once again, close grip, and push away from the bar, pushing up in a straight line. Stop the bar to center of the pin. We do no more than one rep. Once again, push away from the bar. That's a rack lockout. Now, one thing we've done at the university, we found that it was very hard on our athletes' elbows. So we have made adjustments. And now, do rack lockouts with the bar suspended from chains. This gives more freedom of movement for the bar, less stress on our athlete's elbows, and once again, we can adjust the height of the bar by adjusting the links in the chain. This is a suspended chain lockout. Once again, free the movement of the bar, push away. Suspended chain, rack lockout. Okay. Our next max effort exercise are board presses. Board presses can be done off of four blocks. You notice these are two by sixes glued and nailed together. This is a four board press. Once again, a three board press. Two board press and will actually go as low as a one board press. It is important that you have a spotter place the board on your chest so it doesn't slide on you. Also, you must stop the bar on the board. Stop it. Pause it on the board, then reverse the direction. Three board press would look something like this. Bar block is placed on the chest. Once again, inhale, get your air, lower the bar, and lock straight up. This is a max effort board press. Once again, we can use four, three, two, or one board. Last one we'll demonstrate is a ball press. If you have a Swiss ball available, we advise that you use it. This places the body in an unstable environment. We do dumbbell bench and or dumbbell incline off. Dumbbell bench, dumbbell incline, exactly the same way we do when we do on a flat bench or flat incline. Dumbbell bench, hips up. 
Palms face in, elbows 45 degree angle, press straight up. Again, punch away from the dumbbell. If we want to do a dumbbell incline, we just drop our hips. Once again, dumbbells go a little higher on the shoulder and chest, place intense stress on the shoulders and triceps and upper backs. Push straight away, pressing straight up. Always accelerating the dumbbell. Dumbbell incline, dumbbell flat bench, ball press. We're going to talk about the exercises we use to strengthen our shoulder complex. The first one is a standing dumbbell lateral raise. Notice the dumbbells on the side of the body, palms are turned in, facing the body. All you'll do is raise out to the side, parallel to the ground. Notice a straight line from shoulder to elbow to wrist and return. This is a dumbbell lateral raise. Single arm dumbbell ladder raise, make sure you have an apparatus to hold one hand on so your body can stay in a perpendicular position to the ground. Once again, palms facing in, stand straight up, raise the dumbbell out to the side, and return. Never raise above parallel, no straight line from the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist, five degree flexion in the elbow. This in contrast to a leaning dumbbell lateral raise, notice you lean in, once again, and raise out. 45 degree angle, body to the ground, single arm, leaning dumbbell lateral raise. Okay. Next exercise in our series of shoulder work is a dumbbell shoulder press. First of all, we raise the dumbbells up, palms face in, we press straight up, but we do not lock out. Notice, notice there's still about a five to 10 degree flexion in the elbow, return straight. When we press, we press in a straight line. Second thing you need to notice about dumbbell shoulder pressing is the angle of the bench. Most benches will be adjusted to 90 degrees. We do not want a 90 degree angle of the bench. Follow the 90 degree angle as athletes start to perform the exercise or the movement. Instead of sitting straight back, they wind up in this position. Notice the space between the back and the bench. Place a lot of stress on the AC joint. Also a lot of stress on the lower back because it is done improperly. So what we have done to correct that problem is we've angled the bench back 10 degrees. So the bench is at an 80 degree angle, not a 90 degree angle. This way our back and butt off stays in contact with the back pad. We do not place any stress on our lower back. We do not place any stress on the AC joint from being in too vertical of an angle. Okay. In contrast to our seated dumbbell shoulder press, we now go to a standing single arm dumbbell shoulder press. Find an apparatus where you can hold on, keep your body perpendicular to the ground, keep your shoulders parallel to the ground. Raise the dumbbell up. Once again, palms face in, press straight up overhead. This is a single arm dumbbell shoulder press. And then switch to the other side. Okay, Jay. <coughs> Next series of exercises, once again, do the shoulder complex focuses on the posterior delt versus the dumbbell bent over lateral. Notice my feet are shoulder width apart, there's a slight bend in my knee. I will kick my buttocks back, my torso is parallel to the ground, my back is flat, head up, or head looking down, dumbbells hang down in front of me, five degree flexion in the elbow, and I raise out to the side. Notice the front of the dumbbell stays in line with the ears. This is not a rear delt raise. This is. It is a reverse fly. Upper arm goes parallel to the ground. Dumbbells in line with the ears. Okay, Jack. You know what? Next exercise is a strap pull. Strap pulls can be done with a regular strap handle, or it can be done with a rope, or it can be done with a band. It can be done on a lap pull-down machine, or it can be done on a cable crossover. Notice the height of the cable and its adjustment. It can be adjusted somewhere above the head or higher. Step back from the machine. Pull up and away. As I pull back towards my face, I pull the rope apart, thus hitting the external rotators and posterior delt. This is a strap pull. Off the lap pull-down. Down with bands. What we do with the bands, we grab the band so there is some laxity in the middle of the band. When we start the movement, our hands are together. As we pull, we pull the band apart. Once again, pulling above head or to the forehead. Strap pull with the band. Okay. 
All right, next exercise is a face pull off a lap pull down machine. This can be done in a standing or seated position. This can be done with a number of variation of bars. This is a narrow semi supinated grip. This is a wide semi supinated grip. They can be done with a regular pro lap bar. What I'll do is I'll grab the handles, slightly wider than shoulder width or wider, lean back on the machine, and pull right to my chin. And I'll just keep my elbows up and out away from the body to work the posterior delt and upper back. This can also be done in a seated position where the athlete leans back at a 45 degree angle, shoulders to the chin, and returns. Now, so when I return, I do not let it stretch up. I stay in that 45 degree angle. My elbows are not fully extended, about a five degree flexion, and I pull back. Once again, focusing on the posterior delt and upper back. Face pulls. Gotcha. So, they're like, I'm not doing that fucking shit. Come down with summer. Okay. Okay, next exercise, a seated dumbbell clean. Sit in upright position, let the shoulders relax, almost round the shoulders. First thing we do is we pull the shoulders back, throw the dumbbells up. So my elbow and arm is a 90 degree angle to my body. My elbow is flexed in 90 degree and return. Relax the shoulders, rounding the forward. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, pull back. Rotate up with the dumbbells. This is for your upper back. Posture your delt. External rotators, relax, squeeze, and pull. Seated dumbbell cleans. Next exercise, dumbbell front raise. Notice the dumbbells are in front, palms facing. Dumbbells are slightly in front of the body. Raise together, parallel to the ground. They can be done alternately or together. This can be done also with a plate. This is a front plate raise. Raising up until you see through the hole and returning. This can be done in a standing and or seated position. Dumbbell front raise or plate raise. Okay, the next series of exercises deals with training the traps which support the base of the neck. Notice we use straps when we perform some heavy shrugging movements. In the shrug, the weak link is going to be the grip. Don't worry about your grip. We will do other activities and exercises to strengthen. We're more concerned with strengthening the muscles of the traps. Very solemnly, do we do anything less than 15 to 20 reps on a shrug? First set of exercises we're going to show you is a dumbbell shrug. We'll show you two different ways. One with the palms facing the body. One with the palms on the side facing the body. Semi-supinated grip, notice chin is down, elbows up, shrug shoulders to ears, and return. Pause briefly at the top. Shrug shoulders to ears, and return. Notice my palms face the side of my body. With the dumbbells in front, palms facing, notice I stand tall, I don't bend at the back, I stand tall, and just shrug shoulders to ears, chin down slightly, pause at the top. Dumbbell shrugs in front, palms facing, dumbbell shrugs on side, Palms facing. Okay. Next exercise, a classic barbell shrug. We will take no wider than one thumb from where the smooth section of the barbell meets the knurling, which means my hands will be roughly right on the outside of my thighs. Notice when I pick the bar up, I pick the bar up with my legs, not my lower back. I stand tall, chin slightly down, elbows locked, shrug shoulders to ears, and return. We do not want a full body dry heave. Shrug shoulders to ears, and return. This is a classical barbell shrug with a close grip. We will also do a barbell shrug with a wide grip. Notice the ring on the bar, my pinky will take place around the ring. This is more of a snatch grip or wide grip shrug. Same thing, lift the bar with the legs, elbows straight, chin slightly down, shrug shoulders to ears, and return. Now, let's also sit with my legs. I'm performing a shrug with straps. The proper way to wrap the strap is under and over. And rotate the strap or your wrist towards you, thus tightening the strap. 
This gives us a tight, close grip. Once again, the grip is going to be the weak link in a shrug, but we're more concerned with training the muscles of the trap than we are the grip. So please make sure you get a pair of straps to wrap with shrugs, either with a barbell or a dumbbell. I talk about our training your triceps. We do a tremendous amount of tricep extensions here, whether we do it with a dumbbell or a barbell, whether it be on a decline, flat, or incline bench. You notice your triceps are trained immediately after your bench press. This is the most important muscle group for helping to improve your bench, specifically the long head of tricep where it connects to the elbow. What we're going to do is demonstrate flat bench tricep extensions. We'll use dumbbells first. Notice that the upper arm from the elbow to the shoulder will stay perpendicular to the ground. You'll lead with your wrist. This is a tricep extension. This is not a tricep press. Elbows up. Notice the inside head of the dumbbell touches the shoulders to roll back, stretch the tricep more, extend straight up. Control the descent, roll the elbows back, inside head of dumbbell, touch the shoulders, go straight up. Will it be done on a flat bench? Incline. Incline together. Or on a decline. Elbows always stay up, always lead with the wrist. Tricep extensions again can be done with dumbbells or a straight bar. Okay, tricep extensions with a straight bar can be taken to the chin, to the nose, or to the forehead. Notice the elbows always stay up, lead with the wrist. They can also be taken behind the head to the bench pad, pause, straight up. Behind the head to the bench pad, pause, straight up. The pause eliminates the monotonic stretch reflex or breaks the eccentric concentric chain, helps develop explosive tricep extensions. They can be done on the bench behind, pause on the pad, or they can be done on the floor using different diameters of plates, either two and a half, five, tens, or twenty fives, which will change the range of motion when you do an explosive tricep extension. Those are tricep extensions. There we go. Next set of exercise we're going to talk about our lap pull-down. You see the number of different variations of bars that we use, the different V-grip handles, semi-supinated grip wide, semi-supinated grip close. The key that you'll see throughout this video with everything we do is constant variation of movement, resistance patterns, and exercises. This lap pull-down is a pro lap bar. You can either take a wide grip to vary in, a medium grip, or a close grip. You can also take a semi, um, excuse me, a supinated grip or palms face. It's a reverse grip, underhand grip, or palms facing grip. We're going to demonstrate a lap pull down with a medium grip. Notice some arms are above my head, my head is forward. I will lean back slightly and pull to my chest. Pulling straight down, concentrate on squeezing your shoulder blades together. A lap pull down is not this. Pull out, you lean back slightly and pull. You do not try to go parallel to the ground to pull. That lets me know the weight is too heavy. Arms above head, lean back slightly, squeeze the shoulder blades together, pull to the top of chest. Flat pull down. Next group of exercise is chest supported rows. This is a hammer high lap row that we will utilize. This can be done with both arms or single arm. This is a regular hammer row. Again, can be done with both arms or single arm. This is a hammer iso low row. Again, can be done double arm or single arm. You can also vary the grip from pronated to semi supinated. This row machine can also be used with semi-supinated grip or supinated grip. These are types of chest-supported rows. There's also a horizontal chest-supported row that you may find in a lot of health clubs or gyms, wherever you're training this summer. But this is what we refer to as some type of chest-supported row. OK, so let me demonstrate. This next exercise is a dumbbell row. Again, a horizontal movement that we will use for rowing. Torso will remain parallel to the ground or in a horizontal position. Notice I place my knee on the bench, my left support hand. 
staggered stance with my right foot back, grab the dumbbell, just pull the hip. This is a dumbbell, grow. Notice it's done in a controlled movement, it's jerked, it's pulled with the upper back, and last, dumbbell row. We utilize, utilize a lot of chinning movements specifically for our skilled people, whether it be chins with variations of grip width, either close or wide, supinated, semi-supinated, or pronated. Obviously, it's more difficult for a bigger individual to do pull-ups, so what we do is a floor pull-up. Floor pull-up is nothing more than placing the bar in a power rack. I'm going to demonstrate a floor pull-up with my feet on a box, which increases the difficulty. I suggest when you start your feet on the floor, and just pull chest to bar. I can use different grips, different hand spaces. Floor pull up, feet elevated. Once again, start the floor pull up, feet on the floor. As you become stronger, increase the difficulty by elevating your feet in a box. Next series of exercises deal with strengthening the muscles of the rotator cuff we call prehabilitation movements. We spend more time strengthening our external rotators on our shoulders. We do a lot of indirect work on our internal rotators from all the pressing and all that foot out movements we do. The first one I'm going to demonstrate is a lying external rotation. All you do is lay on your side, arm flexed at 90 degrees, elbow on hip, and externally rotate. This is a lying external rotation. Lying internal rotation is again my elbows in my side, arm flexed at 90 degrees. Lying internal rotation. Seated external rotation. Place my feet up on a bench. My knee is under the height of my shoulder. Chest is up. Elbow is right on the inside of my kneecap. Arm flexed at 90 degrees. Allow the dumbbell to externally to rotate underneath the knee and externally rotate or pull up. Do not bring the dumbbell back to the groin or stomach area. The dumbbell must go under the knee to stretch the external rotators. This is seated external rotation. Another version of external rotation. I'm seated on the ground, my arm is abducted to about 80 degrees, keeping the elbow at 30 degrees scapular plane. Let it hang over the bench, externally rotated. This is external rotation, arm abducted. Okay. Once again, external rotation. This time we're going to use an uh, upright bench. We're going to stand. Arm will be abducted to 90 degrees, 30 degree scapular plane. Arm flexed at 90. Standing. External rotation. Notice the range of motion. Next series of exercises specifically designed for our quarterbacks, and we all we will use it with all our other athletes. This is a piece of thoroughband. Most trainers in your high school have this. It's a blue thoroughband medium resistance. We do zero degrees internal rotation, zero degrees external rotation, 90 degrees external rotation. 90 degrees internal rotation. Notice I pivot on my elbow. Then we do 60 degrees external rotation. Notice my elbow is at 60 degrees. This is 90, 60 for external rotation. All our quarterbacks do that, set to 20, but we also use it for our other athletes in the beginning of our conditioning program or strength and conditioning program for the summer to strengthen the cuff. Right. Once again, as on the videotape you already received for your six-week workout uh, during the spring, we demonstrated this guy's box squatting. Again, the benefits of box squatting are numerous. Hit the same depth every time, break the eccentric, concentric train, eliminate the plyometric effect and my tag stretch reflex, develop great starting and accelerating strength, develop great hip strength. The box squat is one of the best exercises ever used for teaching proper squat technique. We teach our athletes to squat, we teach them to squat back, not down. 
When box squatting, make sure the bar is placed in the base of the trap. Elbows are tucked and pulled in. Feet are wider than normal when you squat. Toes should be straight and point ahead. If you're not that flexible, line your toes to point out slightly. Pull the elbows in, take a big gulp of air. Notice my chest is out. Nice natural arch in my back. Start by pushing your hips back and down. The entire time you push back, you hit push or squatting down, you should push back. Notice my elbows are tucked in. Notice my shin angle from my ankle to my knee is straight up and down. I pause on the box, break the eccentric concentric chain. I keep my lower back and abs tight, relax my hip flexors, push through my heels and midfoot and accelerate straight up. So a box squat is push back and down, drive straight up as fast as you can. Squat back and down, drive up as fast as you can. Once again, your stance is wider than a normal squat stance. Yeah, I am a 600 pound squatter. And I'm only training at 50% of my one rep max, which is 300 pounds. I am still exerting 600 pounds of maximal force into 300 pounds. The key is to move the bar as fast as possible. Do not stand up off the box slow. You have to stand up the, off the box as fast as you can. Now, when we normally squat, our feet are slightly wider than our hips, toes slightly pointed out, and once again, we push back. And as we go down, we continue to push back. We're striving for a shin angle to be a vertical column, straight up and down. So a regular squat is nothing more. Feet slightly wider than hips, toes slightly pointed out, or once again, we prefer to have them straight. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna push my hips out, my knees will go out, and my chest will go out. Let your knees travel out. My knees travel out, I shorten the distance between the hips, and the knees improve the body's lever system and uh, uh, create a stronger angle. Okay. So next exercise, last exercise we'll hit on is a hang clean. Technically, like a box squat, you must pay particular attention to technique. This is the way we will teach a hang clean here. Your feet will be slightly inside your shoulders. Toes slightly pointed out, bend your knees. The biggest mistake I see athletes make when they hang clean is they squat down. We do not squat down. We do not rock our torso. We push our hips back. As we push our hips back, our chest stays out. Our shoulders will come slightly over the bar. Elbows are turned out. My wrists, elbows, and shoulders are in a straight line. And as I get the bar down on the top of my knee, I drive my hips through. Driving up onto the balls of my feet and violently shrugging my shoulders. The speed on the bar is going to come from the violent shrug of the shoulders. And then I catch. And it is not a reverse curl. The bar does not travel out in front. The bar travels directly up the front of the body. Yeah, it's on you. It's like a fucking waste of time. Once again, check the stance. Toes slightly out. Arch in the back. Chest out. Shoulders back. Push the hips back. Push the hips back. Shoulders come over the bar. Jump. Push. And jump. Explosively extend the hips through. Shrug the bar. The speed on the bar will come from the violent shrug. Then rotate, rotate the elbows through the catch. That's a hang clean. As I stated on the other video, I'll stay on this video. Every exercise in your summer conditioning book is explained with a description. You've also seen some of them now on a video. One suggestion to all freshmen, do not wait to begin your strength and conditioning program when you get here. Start it now. Don't wait till August, you will be behind. If there are any questions, contact myself or Chad Husko. Our phone number is area code 412-648-9179. Thank you.